It's Gabriel. It's Bailey. And this is CYMK. Museum update! Museum update! <laughs> what, what? So, summer is almost here! And so you it, know what that means. I. That means... That means free art kits to go are going to be available. Summer for Kids is happening. What, art what? of Nature camps. What, what? Play and play movie what, what? nights. We got a lot of stuff going on we this summer. We do have a lot of stuff going on. It's so hot in here. Okay, we do have a lot of stuff. Because it's summertime. That's why it's so hot, Ooh, the sun is blazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's some, cool, there's some cool activities going on this summertime. <laughs> Check out our Eventbrite for more information to how to sign up, when to sign up, whenever these events are going to drop, as the kids say. Did they say that? Yes. Oh. Yes. Moving on to the episode. Thank you so much. (laughs) (laughs) So today I wanted to talk about traveling artists, which... (gasps) (laughs) Continue. (laughs) Which is kind of a broad term, but... Oh my God, a booger came out. I mean it in the sense of... Uh, in plan air is what I think of first when I think of traveling artists. Mm-hmm. If you don't know what in plan air is, in general, yeah, in plan an air form. is an art form, a practice of just painting in the moment, I would say. So, I mean, for West Texas, it's commonly known that it's just like going out and painting barns and cows mm-hmm. and calves. And I think it literally translates to in open air that's what it is yeah so like outside so a lot of landscapes a lot of like ranches around san angelo but a lot of these artists go out so we had an in plan air event last year which was one of the largest ones i've seen because i didn't see it the other the previous year (laughs) yeah it was your only it was my only thing to compare it to yeah it's always big we always have a huge in plan air event that's coming up in october Mm -hmm. of this year um but we're already preparing for it right now if you can believe it 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 began preparing the right after yeah yeah basically right after the other one yeah we start planning the next one but there was dozens and dozens of artists if not and dozens and dozens and dozens <laughs> well so, i think we we get like 38 or so artists but the people that come to buy the art the people that come to support the artists the people that just come to like do the events that happen around the time like yeah dozens and dozens and dozens <laughs> <laughs> so they do traveling and they go and see beautiful places mm-hmm. and I okay first my question is how do you financially support that like where do you stay <laughs> I want to know like where does the person because like as a homebody I can't imagine dry like living in multiple places I feel for you. times in a year yeah well for our case for in plan air uh, a lot of the artists get housed on the private ranches that they're painting on so oh. like they have like a host family that will like set them up in a nice little ranch style home mm-hmm. so that's pretty nice it sounds that's pretty nice cool. so does that work for everybody Everywhere? I think so yeah everybody oh. gets assigned a ranch around San Angelo and they get to go out and paint and stuff and I'm sure the ones that don't go out to ranches and just paint around San Angelo find a place to stay for. I just can't imagine paying can that much afford. for a hotel room at that long of a time because it's like weeks or like, I don't know, even a day at a hotel is like $200. So. <laughs> well, you have to think about they're making a lot of money by coming here because they're selling their art for not very cheap, right? right. They're selling their art for a pretty penny. And, very you know, pretty penny. They also, a lot of them also win really cool prizes of good cash amounts. So they got to make it worth it, you know. I want to be an in-planner artist, but it's also super realistic type of art that I've seen at least, and I'm not really sometimes. Good at that. Sometimes we have artists like Debbie Carroll, who I see every oh, year. Oh, I love yes. Debbie Carroll. Okay, so I first saw Debbie Carroll's art whenever she was in the coop, actually, and it was her and another artist. But her work struck out to me, and it's with my friend, and they had complimented us on how we observed the art, and to me that was like the highest compliment because I mean this was years ago. Yeah, like and you so, never compliment the attendee. I know you don't. Wow. I was just like, I love your. Art, and then I signed up for her email address, and now I get her emails. But now I newsletter Debbie Carol newsletter. I do, I do get her. You're gonna have to forward that to me. Okay, mm-hmm. I will. But, but yeah, see her hers isn't shows. super realistic, but it works. It's beautiful though. Beautiful, beautiful. That. So speaking of traveling artists, more on a <gasps> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. more on a, a not, I don't want to say lower scale, but in a different different lane. Me, I travel. <gasps> have you been traveling? Uh, I travel. Tell yeah. me about it. Okay, I'll tell you about it. I went to Encica, which is the National Ceramic Conference that happens annually. So this year I was in Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati has Skyline Chili. Yeah. Yeah. Jealous so. that you tried that without me. And it was on St. Patty's Day, so the noodle, the noodles were green. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like little worms. 
oh, I guess in, in mounds of dirt. Little actually. witches worms. Little and witches dirt. worms and dirt, and it was it tasted, <laughs> like, it tasted like nutmeg, and it had a clove in it. But that's beside like the point. So, anyways, and there was an eyeball in it, but <laughs> it was from a newt. It was from a newt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it tasted great. Anyways, so. There was hundreds of artists, and on the first day, that not even everyone had checked in yet, and so I only thought that I was getting like half. Of, I don't know. I would only I'd only seen half. And I'll, so, what was, was your role here during Enzika? You so were there. I was with the Contra Clay Studio. We had a booth, mm-hmm. and we promoted our art and residency program yes. as well as our workshops and asking um, other artists if they'd like to be in visit in visiting artists and whatnot. So, uh, about Nzika, what kind of artists did you meet while you were there? I met big-named artists that I... Okay, so it's like fangirling. It was like meeting a bunch of popular people who didn't... Who were so humble. (laughs) So, we met a lot of artists who were actually in our ceramic collection, our permanent collection here at the museum. Yes, that we see every single day, and you're like, wow, I wonder what they were thinking when they made that. Yes, and I got to ask them, and that was, like, crazy. So, it's interesting because whenever I teach like the informative part or like the art to the kids during camps I don't really know what to say I don't really know the story behind it and then I get to see the artist and I'm like oh wait you were in a permanent collection please tell me everything (laughs) it's like realizing that they are also people and like they have lives as well yes okay so some of them we all had little name tags because it's a conference and some of them like wouldn't have their name tags because they're like I don't want to be seen as like this big named artist I'm just here to observe the art they were humble I know so we had met James Watkins and he was in the Mayer Museum as well as he's on the cover of our because he, he's in our permanent collection mm-hmm. and um he's on the cover of our ceramics permanent collection book go buy our book yeah oh, big, no big deal yeah no big yeah. deal go buy our book <laughs> <laughs> hashtag promo i don't know hashtag on the website <laughs> hashtag, hashtag publications hashtag only 20 dollars <laughs> so hashtag available at the country <laughs> <to you. laughs> so that was super great to talk to him he was super sweet his demo was amazing and oh i think just seeing the demos were crazy so we Another artist that we had met was Kyle and Kelly Phelps, and they have really beautiful, I don't want to say dramatic, but not in the like mean way. Dramatic as in like the beautifully, dramatically, mm, the captivating. Cap- no, yeah. honestly, they're beautiful pieces. Yeah. Um, and they're in our permanent collection, and we got to talk to them, and it was just like such an insightful conversation and they were like oh yeah we'll come back out sometime and I was like oh my goodness I got to like do because we're talking about workshops and stuff like Mm -hmm. that you were saying that you were sitting at the booth and you're working this whole time and you're seeing artists go by and they're saying oh San Angelo Texas oh I've been there for this or oh Oh, San Angelo I'm in the permanent collection yes that was so surreal is that people would come up and I'm trying to pitch them our museum basically our town and they were just like oh I've actually been in like five competitions there I'm actually an annual winner and I was like I'm so I felt like I should have known that but then there was every it was like every other person was a national winner basically everybody's heard of San Angelo thanks to the little old Sampa little old ceramic collection we like to have just a little old biggest ceramic collection (laughs) in the western United States just a tiny little (laughs) national largest ceramic section (laughs) the tiniest little national competition every two years yeah (laughs) And so people were, yeah. So we also were promoting our national stream competition that's going to go on next year. And then they were like, oh, yeah, I was in it two years ago. And I was just like, <laughs> no okay. idea. Yeah, they were just like, no oh, big deal. Oh, I won deal. that, you know. I know. So, <laughs> yes, basically, that's how that whole trip went. You can find information about the 24th National Ceramic Competition available on our website. Anyone can apply to it. Mm-hmm. So deadline application is on the website. And it's a great opportunity because... I mean, if, okay, so the museum has a tendency to buy pieces from our Mm -hmm. annual competition, and those pieces go into our permanent collection. So you can be in a published book, you can be in our permanent collection, uh, you can be on our website. (laughs) This isn't even promoting, like, the museum at this point. This is promoting you as an artist. Like, you can really. There's no downside to just trying. Yeah, there's no downside to trying. Really? And that's what going to Nsika honestly taught me. Somebody had asked me if I had to write a paper about my experience at Nsika, it would be just like. There are so there are endless opportunities. Yeah, and like the whole there, everyone was there for like residency programs. So segue into now that you know the life of a traveling artist. Are you interested? Are you going to apply for any residencies in Ohio? Oh, not in Ohio. There's some in. I so I'm really interested in Pittsburgh just because they have a large clay community, and there's one right outside of Pittsburgh as an internship, and I want to do that. And, and you have armpits. 
And that's that's actually one of the requirements is I have to have armpits to get in. Arts for everybody. That's why we literally cater to children who don't have the opportunity to learn in schools because like they are kind of growing up seeing these big name artists thinking you have to be super good right oh, from the get go. Yeah. You know? Because I mean growing up you, you see people and then back to the permanent collection. Sorry. Is, <laughs> <laughs> gosh, how, how dare I? <laughs> <laughs> so you see them behind this glass case. You see their work behind this glass mm-hmm. casing and you're like they're, they're so unobtainable like who exactly. they are. But no, they're they're real people and they're constantly learning. Every mm-hmm. artist is constantly learning and if you say you you're not, you're lying to yourself and lying to everyone around you. Yep. Because yep. You, know? <laughs> you know what I also learned is when you make a piece of art and you think it's not very good or you think it's not as good as whoever else you're comparing to, if you put it in a glass case in in a room full of ceramic art, mm-hmm. it's going to look like it's a million dollar piece yes. because it's it's in the right circumstance, you mm-hmm. know? And just cuz I mean everyone's going to have a pre- as an artist Artists have appreciation for art, mm-hmm. and so they're exactly. gonna, they'll see it and they'll love it. So many artists try to attain what children make when they're young and creative. Oh, and, that childlike yeah. aspect. You they try to recapture that every day and to think you have to be perfect or whatever. It's silly goose, once again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and don't be a silly goose. Yeah, just don't. So. So. I'm glad you had a good trip. Thank you. How was the drive? I'm just kidding. (laughs) Oh, we drove 17 hours. It sucked. Did you like the life out of me? Listen to any podcasts? Any podcasts while you... Any podcasts? Uh, I actually, on the way back, listened to CYMK's Mark Epstein episode that came out that Wednesday. I don't know if you guys heard of it. Ew. (laughs) Yeah, so traveling artists, do it. Go travel. Go travel. Be fun. Have young. Alrighty. (laughs) Goodbye. Bye.